Ziggy, let me do the video, okay? I know, somebody's next door. There are people that live next door. Yeah, they're allowed to live next door. Ziggy, let me do the video. Okay, well, he's probably going to bark throughout the video, but hello there, thrill seekers. That was the song War Zone by Zero Defects. It's always easier to do a Zero Defects song because I know them already and I can, I can play them. That was written by our original guitarist, our sort of uh, main songwriter in the group when Zero Defects first formed back in the early 80s, and that's one of the songs we played back then, and then we uh, redid it in uh, the 2000s, and that's the recording you heard is the redone recording. And... It's by Tommy Strange. Did I say that? Tommy Strange was our original guitar player and main songwriter. And the song is about fear, uh, the fear of war in this particular case, but fear in general. And it kind of works with the subject that I wanted to talk about, which is a comment that I got on yesterday's video. So I'll just read the comment to you. Uh, Hi, Brad. Firstly, wanted to thank you for your videos they bring much insight into my life. Well, you're welcome. I, I hope, I hope uh, it helps. I hope it's good. A bit off Buddhist topic, but I want to ask if you can touch or even comment on the topic of mass shootings, school shootings, terrorism, etc. in America. As an 18-year-old high school student with PTSD due to gun violence, it is hard to wrap my head around the thought of my school getting shot up, friends and teachers dying, and compassion for the person who sheds innocent blood. I know you tend to stay away from the news and media of that sort, but on May 24th, an 18-year-old boy entered an elementary school and proceeded to slaughter children and teachers with his gun. I know I cannot control situations like these, especially because I live in California and this took, took place in Texas, but how am I supposed to think of this situation without feeling anger and hatred as well as sorrow for these children? I know my question isn't very straight up, but I hope you can share some insight about the situation. Thank you. Okay, that's the, that's the question, and there's a lot of ways I could uh, answer this question. There was one comment on that that uh, question, which I thought was a bit, uh, maybe a bit too pointed, but maybe had something to it, where the commenter asked about what about Syria, Rwanda, Ukraine, and all the other violence that's going on in the world. And that's certainly one thing to think about. So I'll, I'll um, give you my background there to start with. My in-laws are Mexican. My wife is my wife was born in the United States, but her parents are both Mexican immigrants, so my sort of extended in-law family are all Mexican. And not related exactly to them, but yesterday I was talking to a friend of mine, another Mexican friend who's not related to me, not even by marriage, and he was telling me that on the same day, I think it was the same day that this happened in Texas, there was a mass shooting in Guanajuato in Mexico, which is where my wife's uh, family is from. They're from Guanajuato. Guanajuato. I think it's pronounced that way. It's with a G. I would say Guanajuato, but I, I don't think that's the right way to pronounce it. But anyway, one of the things I hear from my Mexican side of the family is I hear about this all the time. So this kind of thing that happens in America and is shocking, and rightfully so, it should be shocking, uh, is such common news in Mexico that I, it probably makes the news in Mexico, but it doesn't even make the news here when it happens. It's not international news when, when 13 people get shot in Mexico, but when 19 people, or I guess it's 21 people, uh, get shot in the United States, it is, uh, it is big news, and it's probably news you can tell me in the comments if this is news from uh, in other countries. So this speaks to the fact that as bad as this is, and it's really bad and I don't want to downplay it, it's a terrible thing, but it, there are other countries that are, that are much worse, which is what this other commenter was trying to point out. There are places in the world where this, uh, this kind of thing is, is much more common. Also, he mentioned, the commenter did, about watching the news. 
And one of the reasons I don't watch the news is because I did watch some news about this shooting in Texas, both yesterday and this morning, and the story is, is so confused. I, I don't want to get people in the comments all roiling about what did or didn't happen. I, I can just say that the news reports that I'm seeing are are all over the place like what really happened down there in texas is is up in the air it doesn't seem like anybody really knows and this is one of the drawbacks of the news the news is just an aggregate of sort of hearsay information of what people you know heard here and saw there and and think about there and their theories about what happened and, and the news ideally tries to aggregate that and give you a clear picture of the story of what happened but it it also tends to distort the story my my uh, wife is really into watching this johnny depp trial stuff which is you know kind of an interesting uh, distraction from the the so-called real news and when you see that you can see because the stakes aren't nearly so high it's just celebrities having a, a divorce battle but you can see that the the stories that are news there's all this stuff about tmz following uh, what's her name um, amber heard into the into the airport and all this stuff and it gets very you know it, all all we know about what happened is is what somebody says happened so you don't get a really clear picture but uh, let's address what the questioner actually asked uh, he apparently has ptsd he doesn't go into a lot of detail about his ptsd due to gun violence uh, I have, I don't know if you'd call it PTSD, but somebody who was a close friend back in the old punk rock days, her, uh, most of her family were killed in a mass shooting that happened in Akron, Ohio, uh, God, 10 or more years, well, more than 10 years ago, I, I don't know how, 15 years ago or something like that, happened a while ago, but it... Uh, it was a very shocking thing and it happened very close to me and another friend of mine somebody who lives in Canada was involved in a, a school shooting at, at a at a uh, college in the Canadian style by college in Canada in, in America we use the words uh, college and university uh, synonymously but in Canada college is a different thing anyway she was at a college in Canada and uh, it was uh, there was a shooter that came in there and and she was involved in that and she definitely has PTSD from that so so there is that and I mentioned yesterday my wife it wa was a teacher but uh, still works in a school as what they call an instructional coach which is a sort of teacher of teachers she sort of teaches 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 teachers how to teach is what she does for a living so she's in a school all the time so this kind of like uh you know has has some effect on me as well and I, I can tell you how I deal with it uh, there's a few things here you can't control situations like this this is what uh, the commenter says and it's what I say the 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 world is is complicated and we don't know exactly why things like this happen I put up a video a while back about my reaction to the September 11th, 2001 attacks on the United States, the terrorist attacks, and my feeling that 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 was me, that was me who caused it. It was something that came out of my Buddhist practice, a deep understanding that the people who perpetrate acts like this are ourselves. And it's very th this gets into some very deep philosophical things in buddhism which are difficult to explain in the case of my reaction to the september 11th thing it was a very visceral reaction because i've been practicing for a long time and this is no longer a matter of philosophical speculation to me this is this is the real understanding that the consciousness which exists in my body mind is the same consciousness that exists in existed or exists in a sense in the minds of the people who perpetrated the September 11th attacks and in the person who shot up that school yesterday and in whoever shot up the people in Guanajuato yesterday there is only one something that looks out of all of our eyes and somehow that something uh, on 
multiple occasions in the human world goes very, very wrong, goes haywire, and tragic things happen. But that person who did this action is me, is you, in a way that is very difficult to explain. Um, I remember when I was a teenager, you know that song, uh, Sympathy for the Devil, uh, Rolling Stones song, and there's a line about who killed the Kennedys after all, it was you and me, something like that. And I remember saying to this friend of mine at the time, and I was probably 16 or something, and I said, I don't get that line. What do you mean, what does he mean we killed the Kennedys? And my friend said, well, because we as a collective made the Kennedys famous, and because they were famous and, and important people, then they became targets of somebody who uh, wants to shoot famous and important people, and therefore we are all involved. And that's that's a way of understanding it, and that's fine, but the Buddhist way of understanding it goes like 11,000 times <laughs> deeper than that. And it says that actually, I killed the Kennedys. I am Lee Harvey Oswald. Well, I don't know if Lee Harvey Oswald did it. There's a lot of controversy about that to this day. But in a sense, let's say Lee Harvey Oswald did it. Lee Harvey Oswald, or Sirhan Sirhan, who killed um, Ted Ken uh, was it? No, not Ted Kennedy. Who did he kill? The other Kennedy, oh, Robert Kennedy. Anyway, those the, the consciousness that exists in my body-mind and the consciousness that existed in their body-minds exactly the same, is exactly the same consciousness. And that's, that's a difficult thing to understand, and I'm just going to put it out there and not try to explain it uh, for now anyway. Maybe in another video I'll try this. Uh, the fear... That, uh, that this person feels, I can understand, but there again, fear is one of these things that we live in a very safe society. That's one of the things that a lot of us don't really understand because we kind of take it for granted. But the society we live in, if we're Americans or Europeans, Australians, Japanese, uh, Koreans, uh, you know, really a large portion of the world, probably most of the people who watch this video channel are living in societies that are incredibly safe. Uh, I, I think back to uh, my, my upbringing. I, I lived in Nairobi, Kenya when I was a child. And I put this in my new book. I put uh, a line that I use sometimes, which is, you know, today's helicopter parents would probably be shocked to learn that not only did I play by myself outside when I was 10 years old, I played by myself outside when I was 10 years old in Africa. <laughs> Ziggy can, <laughs> can uh, uh, substantiate that, I guess. Ziggy, come on. Ziggy, can I do my video, please? Okay, so... Africa uh, being a much more dangerous place, but those times being a time when parents were less... It wasn't that parents were less concerned. They accepted the fact that life was dangerous. Nairobi was known to be a relatively safe city. You know, as safe as most American cities, at least at the time that we lived there. I don't know what it's like now, but at the time we lived there, it was uh, the crime rate was low, and although lions, leopards, hyenas, and other animals like that roamed free in the surrounding area, they very rarely, I never heard of them while I was there, coming in to the city itself. They tended to kind of stay away from large groups of humans because they're smarter than, than that to, to, to go mess with that. But it was certainly uh, something that was possible. Uh, we didn't know the country. It, you know, there was a lot of uh, stuff going on. They'd, they'd had their revolution just 10 years before we came there, so it was a pretty recent thing. I, imagine going to a country whose, uh, whose big revolution happened in uh, the year 2012. That's what we were kind of walking into at the time. Uh, there were poisonous snakes that uh, that were there. Uh, you know, even though the lions and leopards didn't come in there, there were poisonous snakes around. There were other kind of animal things. There were people dangers. But we were, uh, at the time, people were less concerned about that. I, 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 I'll rephrase that because I had to rephrase that. It's not less concerned, but more accepting of the fact that danger was part of life. And danger is part of life. And if you live your life in fear, 
you're not going to have much of a life. So at some level, you just have to accept that things are dangerous. Driving in a car is dangerous. I, I drove in a, a, a Tesla <laughs> a couple of, was it, I guess it was last week. And the driver of the Tesla was kind of being very cavalier about the automatic driving thing and we're on the highway and he doesn't have his hands on the wheel at all because the, this Tesla drives itself. And I'm going, uh, can you please put your hands on the wheel? Because <laughs> this is, uh, but, but even driving a normal car, anything is dangerous. Driving a car is dangerous. Going, uh, walking across the street is dangerous. We just put that out of our minds. So you have to kind of realize this. And one of the things that I think, and this might be controversial, is that karma is decisive. So whatever your karma is, this is what I've decided for myself. So whatever my karma is, it's going to ripen the way it's going to ripen and there's nothing I can do about that. So I don't play fast and loose with dangerous situations and I'm pretty much risk averse myself. I don't put myself into situations that I, I think are risky uh, very often. But on the other hand, I don't shy away from life because of, of risk and, and it's controversial to say this but in the, in the past two years there's been a lot of stuff where people have been trying to avoid risks that I'll just say it to me are unavoidable you know these, these are things that are unavoidable and all the stuff that we were doing to try to avoid them probably didn't make much difference at all I don't want to I don't want to stir up controversy there but that's that's kind of the way I feel and and it's that risk averse thing so feeling compassion again this is uh, from the the email or the uh, comment feeling compassion for the people who, who perpetrate this sort of action you know it's not necessary to to feel like great love and warmth for them and you know I know the Metta Sutra says we should feel warmth and love for everybody you don't have to feel that. Uh, feeling hatred for somebody who does this sort of thing, I understand that because, you know, I've felt that myself. It's just a feeling that comes across in my mind and I let it pass. The, the thing not to do, the thing I would advise to avoid doing is dwelling on hatred. Hatred comes and it it stays for a while and it passes if you don't grip it and so that's what I would do about the hatred about the fear it's the same thing it's just something that passes through the mind and I'll say it again because I've said it before doing zazen is one of the ways you can kind of confront these things it does have even though Koto Sawaki famously famously said it's good for nothing it does have some practical benefits because it allows you to sit with whatever is happening. You sit with the fear and the hatred and the confusion and the PTSD and, and whatever. I'm trying to look at what he says in the emails, the sorrow, you know, whatever it is, you just sit with it and you feel it and you let it go. So it's not that you're trying not to feel it. You're just trying to open the hand of thought, as, as uh, Kosho Uchiyama said, uh, let go of the feelings as they happen, not grip them, not involve yourself too much in them. And that's really all I can say. I feel like I've gone on too long anyway, but I, I think it's a, a, a tragic thing and uh, anything I say that might be wrongly taken as me trying to minimize the tragedy that happened or the grief that those the people that are feeling who are involved in it, I'm sorry, I don't mean to say that. I just mean to say that there is an approach that one can learn in which that sort of feeling doesn't become quite as overwhelming. But, of course, it always comes. Anyway, there you go. Uh, I don't know if I've said anything. Ziggy's trying to say his piece on it. If you want to support me saying more things, you can go to the URL you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main and usually only ways of making a living. So I thank you for your support. But as always, this is offered for free, so you don't got to pay if you don't want to pay. 
Also, uh, what video would be complete without a plug for my new book, which is out now, so go buy it and make it a million seller. I am still, I I'm having so much trouble with audible.com, getting them to uh, like the files that I upload. So I'm uploading, this is I think the fourth time I've had to upload the entire book. So those of you who are waiting for the audiobook, talk to audible.com about their, uh, their quality control practices, which are, I think, a bit too much. But <laughs> I like them because they give me money, so there you go. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. Ziggy, what are you barking at? What's going on over here that you have to keep barking and interrupting the video? All right, cutie. Go on. Sniff the ground. See you later. Bye.